is going on guys? I hope everyone is doing well. It is the long awaited update video that everyone has been asking about. And I was, I was kind of just waiting on uh, getting this in and installed. But as you can tell, I ended up going with an Alucab. So Alucab is obviously a company that makes canopy campers and rooftop tents and awnings and uh, a whole list of things. So with that being said, I ended up going with the Alu Cabin. So they are known for their canopy campers really and their canopy conversions for the Land Cruiser and a couple other models. In 2022, they ended up releasing a full size version. So the canopy camper is very similar to this, but it is for mid-size pickups. So Tacomas, Colorados, things like that. They just released the full size pickup version in 2022. So I was waiting on that. And then once they came out with that, I had to wait for the F-150 Fitman kit. So the Fitman kit is basically this lower panel that is truck specific. They did release this earlier this year, but I had to wait for the new shipment to come in uh, for the F-150 platform. That finally ended up coming in. So we got that installed and this is the new Alu Cabin. So you can tell the difference between the Alu Cabin and the Alu Cab Canopy Camper uh, from the windows. So full size has two individual windows and the canopy camper only has one large window on the bottom. The cabin is taller, but realistically it's very similar sized. Both the canopy campers for the midsize and the alu cabins for the full size, you can get for both five and a half foot beds and six and a half foot beds on both midsize and full size trucks. So realistically they fit just about everything. But this thing is completely badass and I'm excited to actually get into it and show you how I spec'd this specific one out and why I chose the options that I did. Let's go ahead and get things started just to see what all, just the base Alu Cabin comes with. So the Alu Cabin itself comes with obviously the rooftop tent which is incorporated in to the lower platform. A good way to think of this is realistically, it is a glorified truck topper with a rooftop tent built into the top. So as you can see, the rooftop tent does uh, expand from the top or lift up from the top, and it is incredibly easy to open and close. I mean, there's no tucking or, um, you know, it, it's a very, very good design. It is a wedge style rooftop tent but there is plenty of room. So it does extend on the five and a half foot bed model. It does extend from the back of the truck all the way to just about the B pillar. And because of the Alu cabin being for full size and being for a full range of models, it is quite a bit taller. So without a roof rack on the truck, it does look like there's a huge gap in there. But once the roof rack goes on the truck, it will be significantly cleaner. There isn't much of a gap on this model. Now on some vehicles, there is more of a gap right here. Um, there is part of the fitment kit which allows for different you know, size beds and, and they will basically make it so that there's a, a fill plate that goes in here. But for this specific truck, it doesn't need it. The floors do lift up in this, so you can completely stand in your bed and just stand up in here when you're not actually up there sleeping. So this will actually lift up to the uh, angle of the, the tent roof itself, and it basically gives you a whole living platform within this area. So this is going to end up getting built out with cabinets on both sides so that there is storage and I don't have to have you know camping crates or anything like that everything will just end up getting stored in the truck. It is super secure. There is locking points on the hinge for the back door. And then each individual uh, locking mechanism on the doors, so there's two per door, does lock with a key. So nobody can necessarily get in. Back to the original question though, a standard 
alley cabin will just come with this part, the fitment kit for the specific truck, and the tent. So the awning, the gutter right there, um, the table that's under here, all of that, the, the uh, spare tire carrier on the back door, all of that is extra. And these things are not cheap, I'm not gonna lie to you. I did end up going with the spare tire carrier. Now, they only rate this to being good for 33 inch tires. Obviously, the Raptor does come factory with 35 inch tire, and yes, I know the wheel is different. The new wheel that's matching all the rest of them is coming in uh, in like three days. And I wanted to get this video out to you so that you could see an update on the truck. So that will get changed and it will match all of the rest of the wheels. But as you can see, a 35 inch tire, it is a little tight right here, but this does still move. And then the biggest part is that you can't put the Molly panel attachment that goes right here because the tire comes all the way over and would hit it. So I didn't end up getting the Molly panel attachments because they do come in pairs and obviously I don't need one for that side because I can't use it. So I am going to end up fabricating one for this side so that way I can mount my propane tank right there. Next up, I did end up going with the shadow awning. The shadow awning is absolutely amazing. It's huge. It's self-supporting. Uh, I left it up all night last night and it was pretty windy, but it is a very nice awning probably one of the better ones out in the market right now it does have one built-in leg right there if it does need to be deployed and it's super windy and then it does have some built-in straps as you can see right there you can just pull that strap out and there's one on each corner and I thought it was actually kind of cool you lift this down there is a hard mounted bag right there with stakes in it so you will never be without your stakes if you do end up needing them. So it does, as, as you guys saw last night, it does come pre-wired with lights inside. And this is a standard thing. Um, this is an extra, but it does have four, five, six, seven lights uh, throughout the actual cabin itself. So there is one on each door and they do swivel. So you can use them when the doors are shut on the inside of the truck, as well as for lighting on the outside of the truck at night but there is one on each door as you can see there 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 and there there is one on the bottom here and then there is one up in the tent itself and i can actually reach that while i'm laying down in bed so i was kind of worried about that but that really isn't that big of a deal and then there's one on the door out here as well so with that being said this comes to our next uh, piece that I ended up getting. I ended up going with the GP Factor stainless steel table that does have the cutting board as well that comes out. Let's get some better light. There we go. So this thing was kind of a no-brainer. It's beautiful. It's a very good design. It's at a pretty decent height level. Obviously you can adjust it as needed, but this is perfect for cooking right now or anything like that. So you do have to make some slight modifications if you're running the tire carrier, because this is you know, normally just a, a plate that runs all the way across on the top there. So you do have to cut that out a little bit, and then I ended up cutting a notch out for the inner lock as well. So. That is that. I did not get the, they do offer molly panels that go here and here. I will just be making my own of those. So these right here, this and that are the inner locks. So once you're inside for the night and obviously you want to be secure, you can pop these shut so that way nobody can actually get into the alley cabin. Now, with that being said, I know I was slightly confused about this, but how do you make sure that while you're inside with those locks that nobody comes and rotates this shut and ends up locking you in the alley cabin? 
Now, they did come up with a pretty genius design in my opinion, but it is a little confusing. And just so you know, you cannot open these from the inside. So if you do, for whatever reason, get locked inside here, these are not going to be your way out. You're gonna have to call somebody or climb out the tent or something like that. But this is basically how this works. So these are here and here. If you shut the door, this is the locking mechanism. So it's kind of like a semi-trailer door. Or not a semi-trailer. It's kind of like a uh, shipping container door. So this does rotate freely. And as you can see right here, this is not attached back here. So this handle can move without these actually moving. So when you're locking this door, when you're outside, like when you're going to drive or whatever, you shut that. You then line these up with this and this, and this lever will hit this back bolt and twist this in, and now this back door is secure. It's not going anywhere. But if you're inside and you wanna make sure nobody does that to you, basically what you do is you open the door, and then, like I said, this isn't attached, so you twist this like that so that these are on the outside of it. And then you can go ahead and shut this. So then you would lock it from the inside. And now, no matter what somebody does, these are hitting on the outside of this. So they will not be able to actually go inside and be locked. It will just be locked from the inside. Even if somebody tries to, they will not be able to actually... Uh, use this lever and attach it from the outside because it just mechanically is not capable of going in that section where it normally does lock it in. So. That is how the rear door works. Now, as I said earlier, this whole inside is going to end up getting built out. There is going to be cabinets. I'm going to do a floor and I'm going to insulate everything. I am going to be doing a Wabasto heater. I don't, I, I had really good luck with my diesel heater and I don't necessarily want to go away from that. However, the one reason that I am going to switch to a Wabasto heater is because I don't want to be dealing with two different kinds of fuel. If this was a diesel truck, I would be completely okay with doing a diesel heater just because it's what the truck is using. But in this specific case, the truck is obviously a gasoline vehicle, so I want to be able to run the heater off of the same source. Now, they do offer a really, really nice fireplace kit that actually goes in this area right here, but it does run off propane, and with the way that the propane mount works, it holds a 10 or 15 or 11 or something like that pound propane bottle. And obviously with those, you do have to get them filled at a place that can sell propane in bulk. So I, th that is kind of a turnoff from me on that being my heat source. Not everywhere has a place that sells propane in bulk. So I, I don't want to completely 100% rely on that for my heat source. So I will be going to a Wabasto heater and hard mounting that inside so that this will, the, the heater itself will heat this entire area and then it'll obviously heat rises. So it will go up into the tent area and I can continue my winter camping. I did opt for the water tank. The water tank is a 13 gallon tank and honestly, it's just a fantastic design. It's a little bit of a pain to install, but it's not horrible. Obviously, it's kind of like Legos with this thing. Everything is um, this T-slot track. So it's it's pretty simplistic on, on mounting and, and whatever else you want to do because you just stick the head of the bolt in there, slide it to where you want, and then, and I mean, this T-slot is literally everywhere. All around the door, all around each edge. Uh, right here, it's there too. There's just a piece of weather stripping here and on the front and then all throughout the interior is that as well 
So like I said, I am going to be using the 13 gallon water tank. You can see the plugs are not in right now. The ones on the back are though. So I'm going to be installing a pump so that way I have pressurized water both and it will run along here and come out here. And that's kind of going to be my setup. And then I bought a um, filtration system so that way when you do fill this up with a hose, you can filter the water pre to it going into the tank and that will be good to go. There will be a electrical system, kind of like I talked about. Last night I did just temporarily wire this stuff up, so that way I could use the lights and the charging ports up there on each side of the tent. But I am going to install a switch panel and uh, most likely a Red Arc uh, total vehicle management system, uh, so that way I can have onboard power like I said, there is going to be cabinet designs on both sides, as well as a actual floor with insulation. So that way during winter or colder months or whatever I, I may end up doing if I'm in higher elevation, I am good to go with being in here and staying warm. I ended up getting the gutter system right here. So it's basically just a piece of the same fabric that the awning itself is made out of with the little track that it goes in and it basically keeps this entire area from getting wet when it's raining. So that was kind of a no brainer for me. And I briefly mentioned it earlier, but there is the table slide right here. So this is a full size, uh, I mean, relatively full size table to be able to, it's pretty simple to deploy. You just pull the pin pulls the locking mechanism out of the way and you slide the table out and there you go you have a full table to use for whatever you need cooking um, organizing uh, if you're at the range and you need to you know have a place to set things because obviously you do lose your tailgate which is it's at first I thought it was gonna gonna suck but between that flip down table and that pull out table it I should be fine with, with places to set things and uh, working space to be able to do things. For this shakedown run, I did bring a ladder just in case, because like I said, this Raptor is pretty tall and I have a hard time reaching the awning, but with the sliders and the rear bumper, I, I can reach everything okay. So hopefully it'll kind of stay that way. Otherwise I am going to design a ladder mount with a thin ladder that can just mount right there, regardless whether I need it or not. As for the last option that I ended up going with, I did get the low profile load bars for the top of the tent. Now the top of the tent is weight bearing. So I don't remember the exact specs. I'll put them on the screen of how much weight can go on the roof of the tent and it can still open obviously, but it's actually quite a substantial amount. So. I will end up probably never using that realistically, but I would only probably put kayaks up there if I did put anything. The other plus about having those load bars up there and mounted the way that they are is they will offer protection for the solar panels once they do end up going up there. I will end up putting probably 200 watts of solar panels on the roof. So that way on days like today where it's sunny and beautiful out here, the secondary battery that is just going to be for this living area is going to be able to fully charge just off of sun. All right, so this is really gonna be something you're gonna to wanna to subscribe for because this is basically gonna turn into a progress series or a build series of building this out into the ultimate expedition or overland rig. Um, it's gonna take a lot of time and I'm fully aware of that. So just be patient with me. I do obviously work a full-time job in addition to doing this. It isn't like I'm just a person that does videos on YouTube, but we'll, we'll get into a rhythm and get everything starting to move.
in the lab receipts Now I got you on fire Shit might get released when you walk down the aisle Expose to who you are beneath that fake ass smile A couple songs about you when I told the truth Through and through, never name drop You guilty if you assume it's you From laying under covers to staying